Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to episode 6 of our moments with the Quran Today we take an ayah from Surah An-Nisa In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ مِنْكُمْ طَوْلًا أَنْ يَنْكِحَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is offering solutions for the believers who have financial difficulty with regards to marriage, right? They don't have the financial means to get married. But today's session is not about the solutions for those who wish to get married and don't have the financial ability. Rather, it's a lesson related to how, subhanAllah, the Quran describes a female using this term, muhsanat. Now, this term muhsanat is used in different places in the Quran and it carries unique meanings in some places. Sometimes uh, we find the term used and Allah means by it a married female. Sometimes it's used and Allah means by it a, a female who's free as opposed to a slave girl. Sometimes Allah uses it and uh, through it he, he means a female who's chaste as opposed to a female who is unchaste. And as some of the scholars of tafsir from the Sahaba have said, sometimes this term is used to refer to Islam. Subhanallah. So it is a multifaceted uh, word and its meanings are many in the Quran. But I want to highlight, subhanallah, through uh, you know deliberation, how this term has a relationship to another word in the Arabic language known as al-hisn, which refers to a castle or a fortress. La ilaha illallah. Right? And if we think about it in this way, we see, subhanallah, that a female is a castle and she is a fortress. She is a castle and a fortress to her father and to her husband and to her son and to her brother and to her community. Right? But we also know, brothers and sisters in Islam, that a castle and fortress can only protect us right, based on how much we maintain it. Now you've got to maintain the walls, you've got to maintain the pillars, you've got to maintain the structure so it can withhold any blow that comes to it from an enemy. Right? And that is why in Islam, subhanAllah, a female is protected. Right? Her honor is protected. You can't accuse her of being unchaste. If you do, without evidence, there's a mighty punishment that the Sharia applies to a person who does this. Her financial matters are protected. Her father has to spend on her. It's her right. Her husband has to spend on her. It's her right. Her son has to spend on her. It's her right. right? Her brother has to spend on her. It's her right. And if these people don't exist, then it's her right that the Muslim state, the Islamic state, spends on her. Subhanallah. Her financial matters are taken care of. Her emotional and mental matters as well are taken care of in the sense that you are forbidden in Islam to threaten her with talaq, to mess about with her emotional and physical uh, and mental state. Uh, the Sharia doesn't even give you an unlimited amount of divorces. You only get three chances after that. The Sharia steps in and blocks you from her and protects her, right? And also the Sharia has given us something known as a khula', which means she's allowed to give back her mahar, her dowry, and request to opt out of the marriage contract if, if things get uh, too difficult for her and her the husband refuses to uh, divorce her. If she's being abused and he refuses to divorce her, then the Sharia ah has given her a tool to come out of this of this environment. So subhanAllah, we see how the Sharia ah protects her and rightly so because she's a castle, she's a fortress. The stronger she is, the more effective she can be in protecting the ummah at large, in raising the children and protecting the faith of her husband and looking after the affairs of her father and her brother and the Muslim community. That's who she is, subhanAllah. She is a mighty element in terms of the elements of society and if she is correct society will be correct because her home will be correct and then we'll have a a, a, a a gathering of homes that will be correct thus neighborhoods will become correct and societies will become correct and cities will become correct and then countries will become correct and so on and so forth she is such an important element in society and thus the quran describes her as muhsanat it's amazing wallah it's so amazing that this term even though it has its meanings within the quran but linguistic it has this connection to uh, the term castle and to the term fortress. You know, to my mothers and sisters out there, um, as a takeaway from this particular uh, moment with the Quran, um, Ramadan is a month of reflection, as it is a month of fasting and salah and patience. It's a month of reflection as well. Let us reflect over our uh, role in society, our role as a sister, our role as a daughter, our role as a wife, our role as a mother. And let us uh, identify subhanallah how good we are in those roles and how better we can be and what do we need to do to be able to become better let us use subhanallah ramadan in this way and really live the spirit of the ayat in the quran uh, that describe 
uh, a female in, in this particular way. And to my brothers out there, let us also use Ramadan to reflect in terms of how well we fortify our castles and our fortresses, right? How, how, you know, how good are we as sons? How good are we as husbands? How good are we as brothers, right? How, how good are we as, 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 as fathers? As fathers, as husbands, as sons, uh, and as brothers. How good are we in these roles to the females of society and, 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 and these precious beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put uh, within our sphere of operation. So let us also understand how good we are in, in this space and how, good, how better we can be and what we need to do to get there. I leave you with these words of wisdom until our next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.